suffer in succotash. Here's what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, we kind of teased it a little bit last week for the Pro Bowlers and up. If you are not a channel member yet, um, there's still time. There's no expiration date. If you want the unlimited free content of, on YouTube that we provide, you're, you're more than welcome to get that. <laughs> but if you want to be a channel member and help out a great charity and the Punt Foundation, 50% uh, of all the channel memberships go to the Punt Foundation. We were able to raise $50 for the month of April. We raised $72 for the month of May. Yep. And that's going on top of the 2000 that we raised at the end of last year once uh, officially levels have gone up and we're allowed to talk about certain things. Uh, we're going to cut a huge check over to the Punt Foundation, so we're happy to do that. However, Paul and I have to go back and forth with a little bit of rapid fire. Paul is going to take the offense. I will take the defense. Oh, yeah, let's go. So I will give him a player and a statistic. He will say over, under, and why. Yep. Okay. Right out of the gates, Devin Singletary, 1,000 yards rushing. Under. I mean, what? Yeah, we're going <laughs> under here. Yeah, again, I'll qualify this. You're saying rushing, not all purpose. Not all purpose, Okay, no. yeah, under. Under. Okay. Yeah, so be, Devin Singletary, don't get me wrong, was an incredibly effective back last season. But you're adding Zach Moss into this, and you're adding Stephon Diggs. You're, you're, you're getting to a point where there's there's, there's only football. so many. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of places that football can go. Um, and we know that the Bills are going to give Devin Singletary the rock the first six games, but then Zach Moss is going to come in and going to kind of take away from that. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. It's 64 yards a game. <laughs> he can't rush for 15 yards a quarter. <laughs> Well, gee, when you put it like that. I know. It's like, like 4,000 yards. There's down and a half. Like, there's a 4,000 yard run. What do you average? Five yards a carry? Give the ball three times a quarter. <laughs> I think he could. I think he could. Um, even with Zach Moss. Even with Zach Moss. Now, all purpose, it's a no brainer. Yes. Yeah, I think all purpose. Um, because I think he'll be a little bit more involved in the receiving aspect of the offense. Zach Moss and, and Diggs, great points. Um, like, like, like you said, one football. Then we have one football. So. We'll see how that manifests. Um, but it's interesting you took the under, though. I, th I thought you were very high on Devin Singletary. I, I do like Devin Singletary. I had a thousand all purpose yards. All right, your turn. Okay. Uh, Micah Hyde, 80 tackles, three interceptions. Oh my God, he gave me two of them? Yep. 80, 80 tackles, three interceptions. Oh, uh, I'll go. It's a package deal. This isn't a parlay. This is a parlay. Gotta, gotta take them both. Can I can I do it? I can't do an over under for both of them. Nope, gotta take them both. Oh shh! I'll take over for both. Ooh! I'll take over for both because of the fact. Eighty tackles. I think you'll have eighty tackles because whatever happens with Tre'Davious White, Tre'Davious White has something to prove. He's going to be on the ones. A lot of the ones that are going to be um, asked to. He's going to be asked to go up against all the ones which he has last year and everything else. I'm not pointing anything out that nobody knows. However, with Old man Norman on the other corner, the guy that's going to be playing over the top of him is going to be Hyde. Some of the times when Norman loses a step on a guy and the number two looks like he's open, that's where Hyde shines. So I think he's going to have more than four opportunities to, to have an interception with Trey White locking down the other side. As far as the 80 tackles go, if he doesn't if he doesn't get there in time and the guy does catch it, he's right there. Right. And I think with, with the, the revamp defense going on, I think he's going to have a little bit more uh, responsibility coming down into the box okay. with certain things that are going on. I, if, I, if I could pick, I would have the over for the picks and under for the tackles. Okay. Because I think you'd have like around 70. Yeah. And yeah. – I think he'd have more than four interceptions, but that's that's if you got to give me one, I'm gonna take over for both. Okay, all right. Son of a biscuit. Let me go with you. I will say this: more receiving touchdowns in 2020. All right. Okay. Diggs and Beasley. 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 Beasley's gonna have more. Let me yeah. hit, let me see that. Well, I mean, Diggs isn't a red zone target. Right, Beasley is. And here's the thing: the Bills' offense has a tendency to meander. So that's going from a distance here, right? So we just take Diggs right out of the tape, right off the table there. You did not just say meander. They do. They just mindlessly walk through the forest. <laughs> oh, look! It's the twelve yard line. Where's Hopska? Get ready, Steve. <laughs> Oh my god! 
count raised. <laughs> you know what you sounded like? You sounded like uh, the water, Bobby Boucher's mom. <laughs> you leave me here with Steve. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's so much disdain in that name. <laughs> 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 But that's the truth, man. They just, they walk their way down the field like four yards at a time. It's just not a dynamic move. So I, if, if we're talking, Beasley's a more dynamic, and again, I get it, right? Yeah. Devin, here's, here's, here's where, here's where my point is, right? How many rushing touchdowns did Devin Singletary have last year? Five. Two. Two? Right? I did the same thing. <laughs> The same thing. And then I look at Beasley and I say, okay, so look at red zone targets. You got Brown and Diggs. Neither of those guys are fighting off press coverage in, in, in short area. Diggs, Diggs. He's sneaky. He's, He's sneaky. sneaky. But, Beas but Be this is Beasley's wheel. It, is, it Beasley's is. It is. <laughs> I don't know what was funnier. The Steve or the, oh, look, the 12 <laughs> Good freaking lord. That was good. All right. Are you ready for yours? If I can breathe tomorrow. <laughs> Tremaine Edmonds. Six sacks. Under. Okay. Why? Because in the development of Tremaine Edmonds, yeah. obviously they let him come off the edge a little bit more last year, and yeah. he was able to create havoc, which I think he's more comfortable with. However, right. now two years in it, now two years in, he is getting more comfortable as a a leader, the guy that has to stay in the middle and direct traffic. Okay. You sign AJ Klein for two reasons: one, an insurance policy on Milano, mm -hmm. and and B, you want you want him to do it. He's going to do it because you're going to come out in those base packages because a lot of the, the things may carry over to. 2020 with as far as the Buffalo Bills run defense mm -hmm. you lose Jordan Phillips you lose Shaq Lawson mm -hmm. those were guys that could stop the run I'm not saying that they did it consistently and they were just absolutely they're going to their losses are going to be felt what I'm saying is that teams may try to run more which is why you get an AJ Klein in the offseason to try to stop the run um, <clears throat> that being said he's going to be a guy that fac facilitates is able to direct traffic. You just don't want to give him stuff that he's really comfortable doing. He'll do it. He'll still do it in 2020. But I think just as Josh Allen is to, is to the offense, you want to know by year three if Edmonds is the guy you want to put a lot of money on. That's interesting. So I think you want to see how much of a – how much can you direct traffic and gather what we need you to do? Because then if Klein's gone or Milano's gone, can you let the next guy – can you let him know what he needs to do? Right. Not you do it yourself. I don't know. So that's why I'm going to say – I know I gave a little – no, 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 I, explanation. Yeah, no. But I think he'll have less than, but I think he'll have more than 120 tackles. Oh, that's a big number. It is. It is huge. But it, and he's approached it before, but I think he'll have more. Yeah, I'm looking at that tackles for loss, right? If yes. I see tackles for loss, then I know that he is on it, mm -hmm. right? That's that's the number. He went that up every year, didn't he? Or did he go down? What we, what uh, he, he went up every year. Okay. Yeah, but his total tackle number went down. Some people think that's, you know, that's. A problem. I don't. I don't really foresee. Not a huge. That's, right? You don't know what how many. Deal. Yeah. I rather. I'll take more tackles for loss and less overall tackles. That's fine. If he plays a hundred percent of the snaps, again, I'll has, be happy with that. I mean, geez. I don't want to lose him you at should, all. Okay, middle. let's talk about contract extensions. But yeah, let's get him another year of a hundred snap, a hundred percent snaps. He's. He, he just he, turned seventeen. <laughs> like he, can, <laughs> he just got his night license. God. <laughs> Okay, uh, for you on the offensive side of the ball. Oh God, I don't even want to know if I want to go down this road with you. Um, Josh Allen, thirty-two sacks. Over. Over. You think he's gonna get? He's gonna get sacked. So no, obviously, it's a question for the offensive line. Yeah. Okay. Second year together. I, I'd love to hear this. Okay. Um. Here, here's the deal, right? You're going to ask Josh Allen to pass more this season. They, they are. Like, it's just, it's a given. They're going to ask him to pass okay. more. Okay. Right. Um, which means that if he is going to be uh, as stubborn about <laughs> passing the football as I'm pretty sure he's going to be, uh, that it, it, I don't think it's a matter of the line failing him. I just, 
Allen waits for the receiver to get open. We talked about it on the 4,000 episode, man. Yeah. You so know, it's going like, to be on him, not the line. Right. Yeah. It's, okay. Listen, you know, it's the offensive lines, they can't hold people back forever. That's just, they're not holding, they can't yes. hold pressure back forever. So I, I think he's going to be pretty stubborn about passing the football, and that means the football is going to be his hands a lot. And it's just time's going to get to him. And and they had a lot of design runs last year for Allen that counted as sacks, right? Because you're behind the because line he's behind the line of scrimmage. So I don't really see much of that going away either. I don't think they're going to find better opportunities for Allen to run. I just don't have that much faith in Dable, so I'm going up in the sack number. Mm. And just to preface it, he had 38 last year. I mean, we talked about that before. Yeah. So you yeah. think he's going to have more than 32? I just I just picked two a game and decided to roll with that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. down. I think that's going to happen. I don't know if you're ready for this question. Four sacks, Boshan Joseph. Yes, please. Yeah, really? <laughs> if he, <clears throat> it's a, this is this is a tough one, right? This is this is really this is a sneaky tough one. If he progresses to the point where he's playing sixty percent of the snaps. I think that number would be a given because yeah. that's what he's written. That's why you take the sack numbers away from Edmonds because right. Joseph will do it. Right. Well, remember, oh, Joseph, so Joseph's a linebacker. A lot of us are talking about uh, A.J. Klein being that starting third linebacker. Yeah. There's no promise of that. No, there's not. But you did have Milano, like we talked about previously, but Milano and Edmonds both playing near 100% of every game. Mm-hmm. The, near the end of the year, you get gassed. Sure do. So you want to try to protect your investment. Now with Milano, if they don't think they're going to resign him, obviously it doesn't matter. They're going to treat him like DeMarco Murray. And just <laughs> that's, it, that's it. But yeah. with, with Edmonds, I think it's a little different story. You can keep him for 10 years, and then he still won't turn 28. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joseph is is a guy that you could see McDermott and Beam saying, this is why we got him. Yeah, go this hunt. Is exa- yeah, go yeah, hunt. Go hunt. Go do what you're good at doing. We'll fill in the holes with the rest of it later. You know what right. I mean? And that's why you have admins to direct that. Oh, God, I would love for that to happen. So let me ask you this. Does Joseph fit into the pass rush role that's vacated by Lorenzo Alexander? He could. He, he definitely could. I think you got Tyler McKavich, A.J. Klein, and Vernon Butler. Essentially, I'm, I know it could be different. It could be Quentin Jefferson for Vernon Butler, whatever. Right. Point is, those three guys, special teams, Will, uh, Will Linebacker, mm-hmm. and um, tackle, and defensive tackle, were the three positions that were vacated by Lorenzo that they filled with those three guys. Yeah. If yeah. Joseph sneaks in there, which he could, he could fill two very out of those three positions. He very could fill the special rushing. teams and then the other thing. Yeah, very good at rushing yes, the passer. Yes, he's very good at rushing the passer. Not from a defensive tackle line, but nope. my point is this. But then again, I mean, we saw Teron Johnson blitz the B gap. <laughs> sure did. It doesn't matter. Does, sure it, did. does it really matter on this defense? Yeah, it's. You know, I don't know why, but like that nickel say that nickel <laughs> nickel linebacker role is like the drummer for Spinal Tap. It's like every three games, the Bills are just finding somebody new to put in there because <laughs> the drummer for <laughs> last guy just blew up, <laughs> spontaneously combusted. Oh, God. I, w- I hope that that happens. I hope. What's Jim Leonard doing? Give him a call. <laughs> He's coaching Pee Wee football. <laughs> this guy here is dead. <laughs> Cross the pop. <laughs> I think it's. Yeah. I think Joseph is a, is a really, really cool weapon. So intriguing. Yeah. Like, and again, a guy that a lot of people probably forgot about. But a lot of people probably mark him up as a defensive lineman. And he's the size of one. But he's not. He's the linebacker. I think he can take up that pass rush role by, by Lorenzo. Oh, so I think he's a sneaky pick for four snaps. I, I love I'm totally with you. Him. This one's kind of like a cheating one, but I'll do it anyway. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Cody Ford, 12 starts. Over. You think he'll have over? Yeah, Tynaseki will get the flu or something. <laughs> Fall down the stairs. For himself opening up a jar of peanut butter. Now, I asked you that in the hopes that you would talk about the other tackle as well. Deion Dawkins. Traded. <laughs> uh, I only asked that because right now, I believe, it, you know, I, 
I have a second question for you, but I just wanted to say it really quick. Just, I think people, I'm more concerned with his progression than Allen's at this point. Cody Ford. Yes. Okay. Because I would, yeah. how he goes is will directly affect Allen and everything else in that offense. Right. So, I, arguably, I, I think there's a very strong case to be made, and, and maybe just philosophically you'll disagree with me, but arguably, to a young quarterback, first, second year quarterback, I think there's something to be said about the right tackle <clears throat> position being more important than the left tackle position because it's what you can see. Yes, right. So what's in front of you? Yeah. Exactly. Front side. Front, right. Most of the time, that's front side. And unfortunately, we've had a little bit of a carousel at right tackle for Allen, right? Mm-hmm. So that you have to build you you build trust by what you can see right away. And sure, you know, left tackles. You have a bad left tackle, you're going to get your quarterback killed. But the point is, he's he's not managing that every game. He's right. not managing that every snap because he can't see it, mm-hmm. right? That right tackle position is what is what with, is within scope of vision for him. He can manage that, yes. but. Having a carousel at right tackle makes a young quarterback gun shy, right? Yeah, so very, very good. Young I, quarterbacks aren't supposed to look at the line play, though. but that is right in his right in his grill. Yeah, it is right in his grill. Right. Mm-hmm. I Cody Ford makes more than twelve starts. No, no, I'm not saying at tackle. Really? Now, are you saying that if it was at tackle, I'm just I'll go back to your point. But yeah. If it was a tackle, would it? You attribute that to the stubbornness of the coaching staff, as yeah. far as because you disagree with Deion Dawkins. Yeah. So it's it, I don't see Darrell Williams as starting at right tackle in the court. But you see Ford not starting at tackle, starting at guard, and then Darrell Williams comes in. I think that's a possibility. Ooh. I think that's a possibility. Darrell Williams is not a bad tackle. Like they got him on a really great budget deal. Like mm-hmm. that's a good signing. Right, for yes. a guy you're not asking to start right now, that's a good signing. But th- I think there's going to come a point where they look at the the career projection of Cody Ford and say, may- maybe there's just not, uh, maybe he's better in tight spaces. Mm-hmm. He plays mean. He does. He's a mean dude. He's a mean dude. But you're going to have him replacing another mean dude, Feliciano. Uh, I don't want that. I mean, who says Mitch Morris makes it the whole season? Feliciano slides Hopefully Morris. I know, right? I think there's a lot to be said about that tackle position. And I'm not the biggest believer in Dawkins, especially since he's on a contract year, right? He's so gonna, He's going to play awesome this year. We should be happy about it. He's on a contract year. Uh, but if he plays awesome and Ford plays poorly, do you sign Dawkins to lose Milano? Like, is it a law of attrition at that point? We're like, well, I know what this looks like, and I can't replace this in the draft right now because the last time I tried to replace this in the draft, this is how it went. Like, 